Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with the Movement System. Today we're going to be talking about sprinting biomechanics. We're going to talk about the fundamental movements that are going on with swing and stance phase. Some people will call that flight and support phase. Uh, either way, we're going to break this down phase by phase, talk about the concentric and eccentric muscle actions within each phase. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. This is what we're breaking down right here, the mechanics of running. We're gonna talk about stance phase and swing phase, or you can think of it as support phase where the foot's on the ground and then flight phase where the foot's in the air. You'll hear it both ways. Either way, the mechanics stay the same, the muscle actions stay the same, but we're gonna use early flight phase, mid flight, late flight, early support, and then late support phase. All right, so this is what it looks like a little bit slowed down. All right, let's break it down phase by phase now. So we're gonna use the left foot here. So you can see this is the left leg that just went and did toe off. So this is the, the toe off here. And now we're entering the early flight phase or the early swing phase. So during this phase, what muscle actions are we actually gonna have here? And in this phase, guys, we're gonna have eccentric hip flexion. Now, the reason for that is the hip motion is hip extension. The hip is actually extending a little bit, but what we're using is the psoas major and other hip flexor muscles to control that motion of hip extension. So we call that eccentric hip flexion. This is decelerating the backwards rotation of the leg. So that's coming from the toe off all the way up to there. Also in that phase, guys, we're gonna have eccentric knee extension. So what does that mean? The knee here, the leg is going from, from a straight position here to a bent. So the motion there is knee flexion. We're, we're going from extension to flexion. So we're going from knee extension here to knee flexion. But the quads are what's actually eccentrically activating to control that motion. So we call this eccentric knee extension. So those are the two main motions of early flight phase here. It would be that eccentric hip flexion and then that eccentric knee extension. So again, we're using that trail, that back leg, we could call that the trail leg behind there. And now we're moving into mid flight. So that's whenever the leg's actually coming forward. And you can see right about here is the transition point. So right here, the knee is as far back as it's gonna go. And then as we move forward, now you can see the knees moving forward. So what motion's occurring at the hips here? So now we're going from a knee extended position and the knee is flexing forward. So important guys, the muscles are contracting and shortening to bring it forward. That's gonna be concentric hip flexion. So concentric hip flexion accelerates the thigh forward here. And that's one of the main motions of mid flight. Also, what's going on at the knee? So at the knee, what are we seeing here? And at the knee, we're actually gonna see two motions. So this early part from here to here, as the knee comes forward, we're gonna actually see early on eccentric knee extension. So eccentric knee extension, what does that mean? That's again, the quads activating. So the quads are activating here and they're controlling from a more extended knee position to a more flexed knee position. So the quads are active right here and they're controlling this from just swinging up too fast. And then that's gonna move through the mid flight phase here to eccentric knee flexion. So as we get into this part of the phase where the leg is moving from flexion here and it's moving into extension, now what muscle group has to be on? So we're going from here to here as that knee is going from flexion to extension, the hamstrings, you can actually see right here, the hamstring muscle, that hamstring tendon right here kicking on. And that is gonna be eccentric, in this case, eccentric knee flexion. So the hamstrings are knee flexors, they're eccentrically contracting here to control this leg from, from kicking forward too fast. And when we try to connect this back to like a rehab type thing, the knee extension actually takes a lot of load. There's a lot of force that is on that leg to move forward, those hamstring muscles have to control that leg from swinging forward excessively here. So this is a lot of times where you'll see Nordic hamstring curls, other eccentric hamstring curl exercises preventatively programmed 
to prevent hamstring strains and, and overworking of this muscle. Make sure that muscle has the capacity to actually keep that eccentric control as you go into that phase right there. So you can definitely see, guys, like look right here and then look right here. You can see that hamstring going pretty, pretty hard here to control that leg from kicking out too hard. Okay, so now we're moving on to late flight phase here. What motions are going on here? So in this late flight phase, what's going on at the hip? From here all the way up to here, that hip was in hip flexion. Now that knee is as far forward as it's going to go. So now in the late flight phase is when we have concentric hip extension. So from here forward, you could see that we're concentrically using the glutes and the other hip extensor muscles to concentrically extend the hip back. So the knee is as far forward as it's going to go and now we're concentrically extending the hip back. And guys, this is not perfect running. Uh, this, this treadmill is about 12 miles per hour. That's about 5.5 meters per second. Elite sprinters are more than double this. This is just the fastest the treadmill goes. This isn't exactly what you know top speed sprint mechanics will look like, but you get the idea from here. One thing that you'll notice is I'm actually landing more like a like a jog. And a 12 mile per hour run is like a, I don't know, five-ish minute mile pace. So this isn't that much of a sprint. This is more like a fast run. And I'm actually landing with the foot out here. At true max velocity sprinting, you would probably see this foot contact more back here underneath the center mass of the body. So that's just something to note. But regardless, the, the muscle actions here are the same as we're moving to concentric hip extension here in that late flight phase. What's going on at the knees here, guys? So in terms of the knees, eccentric knee flexion is what's going on. So eccentric knee flexion. What do we what do we mean by that? So specifically in this part of the phase uh, where we're going from that knee as far forward as you can, this is the start of late flight, and this right here is the end of late flight whenever you're actually making contact. So what happened here? We went from a knee flexed position to a knee extended position. So what controlled that? Well, actually it was those hamstring muscles still controlling that knee extension motion. The quads actually aren't concentrically kicking the leg out. At this point, that leg's already moving forward. So we're just slowing that forward progression of the foot by eccentrically contracting the, the hamstrings there. So those are the two main muscle groups involved in the late flight phase. All right, so let's move on to the early support phase here. And this is an interesting phase. This is actually going to be a lot different in jogging or walking where you have a heel strike and a loading response versus max velocity sprinting where there's a little bit of a limited heel strike or no heel strike in most cases. And the loading response is a little bit different because you can see you're in more plantar flexion here. And ideally, you're contacting the ground underneath the center of mass. Again, if I was going a little bit faster, you would probably see that, that move backwards. And even at this speed of running, I probably should adjust this to, to have a little bit farther back with that ground contact underneath the center of mass. But anyway, what are the muscle actions that are going on here in early support phase? So early support phase, guys, we have hip is going from this hip flex position. So hips in hip flexion here and then it's moving into hip extension. Now, that said, there's gonna be a little bit of an eccentric lengthening of the hip extensors to absorb and do some braking force. But that said, there's also going to be concentric hip extension in this phase to keep driving that leg back. So this one's not as clear cut as some other phases because both eccentric and concentric hip extension do occur in this early support phase. Now, what about at the knee? And at the knee here, guys, what we're gonna see is a brief knee extension followed by that hip extension. So what does that actually look like? So we're going from here, we're briefly, as we're absorbing force, we're gonna bend the knee to absorb force. If that leg didn't bend, you would be taking a lot more force through the joint and that would not be ideal. So we're actually gonna absorb a little bit of force by eccentrically bending the knee here. And then just to be clear, eccentrically bending the knee, we're gonna use the quadricep muscles to control this. So we say eccentric knee extension, the quads are on here, and they're, they're basically controlling us from just dropping straight down, right? If the quads didn't turn on, the hips would drop down rather than being maintained at this, this level of the center mass right here. So the quads are kicking on, eccentrically extending the knee here and absorbing load. 
that's going to be followed by a little bit of eccentric hip extension and that's going to resist the knee from just extending back into hyperextend position. So if we didn't have that there guys, that knee would just kind of straighten out and buckle on us backwards. If you're in a rehab setting, you actually might see that walking and that might be something to work on. What is going on at the ankle? We haven't talked a ton about the ankle because in swing phase, that's not as significant, right? Because there's not a whole lot of mass at the ankle that is controlling versus the hip and the knee muscle groups are controlling the entire weight of the leg. But in this stance phase or the support phase, that is whenever the ankle plantar flexors are going to have to actually do some, some work. So the calf muscles. You can see right here the calf muscle is on and it's eccentrically active right here. So it's eccentric plantar flexion and that's basically controlling you from excessively bringing that knee forward. So what does that mean? As the toe touches down here, so let's get this moving again. As the toe touches down here, if the calf isn't strong enough, that knee is just going to come too far forward and put too much stress on that Achilles tendon potentially. If we have a stronger calf muscle, we can control tibial advancement is what we call that. Control the angle of this tibia here by eccentrically contracting the calf muscle here. And that's going to absorb load and keep us in optimal joint mechanics at the ankle here through this early support phase. As we move on to the late support phase. So this is here all the way to toe off. So this would be the late support phase, kind of all this right here. What motions do we see here? Again, looking at that left leg. So some motions that we're seeing here, eccentric hip flexion. Why is that? So we might be thinking, okay, we're concentrically, you know, contracting the glutes and pushing off here. But actually, there's activation here of the psoas and other hip flexors eccentrically to control this leg and control the hip from just rotating in the transverse plane. So that eccentric activation of the hip flexors is going to control that backward rotation of the thigh here. And this is also going to rotate the trunk in preparation for takeoff or swing phase. Okay. What about the knee extensors? So actually our quads or our knee extensors are going to be concentrically extending to propel us forward here. So you can see we went from knee flexion. So here the knee is flexed. And then as we go back into this late support phase, the knee straightens out. So the quads are concentrically contracting to extend the knee there. And then also the last part here, if we go back here, we went from a dorsiflexion position here to plantar flexion there. So we actively, concentrically contracted the plantar flexors. So concentric plantar flexion is aiding in that toe off and propulsion of the body forward. Let's go ahead and look at this at full speed now that we got all of those things because now that just brings us right back to that early flight phase. So kind of at, this is still slowed down, but at a faster speed, that's what we're seeing here. So just to review guys, these are mostly just the sagittal plane muscle groups. So the, the groups controlling extension and flexion. So I hope that helps you understand the biomechanics of sprinting a little bit better and the muscle actions involved. All right guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. If you wanna learn more, go ahead and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you want to, you can join the Strength and Conditioning Study Group on Facebook and learn more there. We'll see you in the next one.